Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Crim and Ollie, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, more grisly British horror from the 70s. Uh, I'm doing a review of The Fog by James Herbert. So I find it impossible to talk about this book without talking about this cover. This cover here. This is, I think, the greatest horror cover of all time. Um, I think it's a fantastically horrific image and fantastically well executed as well. So I really love this style of, of painted cover, um, which you used to get in the 70s and 80s in particular, and which sadly has fallen out of fashion nowadays. Um, I think this is such a wonderful example of it. It is such an eye-catching um, and horrible cover. This is a scene from the book. So um, a man carries his wife's severed head out of the fog um, but yeah it's just such an uh, such a memorable cover and, I, and indeed I do remember it as a kid I remember seeing this cover um, on book you know on bookshop shelves um, and being fascinated by how horrific it was um, I think this cover may in some ways um, you know let alone the book but just the cover may be partly re responsible for my fascination and, and love of the horror genre um, it, it really struck a chord with me um, as a kid um, and I still think it's a fantastic cover today and I think it's such a shame that we don't see covers like this anymore you know modern um, modern horror covers are so boring generally speaking compared to this um, so this is the 1980 edition the original paperback edition from 1975 has a much more boring cover uh, which has just got the fog written multiple times uh, but yeah I think they did a fantastic job with this one so six years into Herbert's career this edition was was published um, he'd written a number of other books by then but you can see that they've you know he, he's really made his mark They've got his name in huge gold letters on the cover, um, bigger than the you know bigger than the font for the for the actual top book uh, for the actual book title. Um, so yeah, he had definitely made his mark, and this is second book. Um, I think went a long way to cementing his reputation. Um, so like the rats, this is about a kind of natural phenomenon um, causing havoc uh, and threatening uh, civilization. Um, in this book, I'd like the rats where, you know, the rats themselves are the um, the aggressors. Um, in this book, it's this mysterious fog that rises out of the ground um, through a, there's like an earthquake and this, this yellowish fog um, comes out of the ground and then slowly starts floating across the country. Um, and anyone who inhales the fog um, becomes either kind of suicidal or murderously insane. Um, so it, it wreaks absolute havoc. Um, and there are, um, as you'd expect from a James Herbert book, a number of really horrific set pieces um, of, of horror um, involving um, you know, mass murder and things like that. So you know, you've got this one with the, with the severed head. Um, you've got a scene where a bus driver um, plows through the people who are waiting at the bus stop. Uh, and most memorably of all, and I think anyone I've ever spoken to about this book remembers this scene. There's a scene in a boarding school um, where um, some of the pupils uh, and one of the teachers get infected with the fog um, and it goes to some very dark and disturbing and horrific places. Um, so yeah, as always with Herbert books, his set pieces are what really make this such a fantastic read. Um, but I think just the concept of the fog um, is a really interesting one as well. So whereas the, the idea of killer rats is is kind of an obvious one and you know it's interesting but it's not anything mind-blowing i think the idea of this this natural phenomenon which which turns people crazy which makes people you know psychotically murderously insane or, or suicidal um is one that is quite chilling in itself let alone the the horrific descriptions in this book so just the idea that you could inhale something and you know would would after that be completely unable to control your own actions, um, I think is something that's quite quite scary. Um, I think it's a deep-seated fear um, that we have as humans that, you know, we know that we are capable of, um, you know, physically capable of committing acts of violence. It is our conscience, uh, you know, that stops us from, from doing that. So the idea that that could be overridden by something naturally occurring, um, I think is, you know, is something that is intrinsically um, quite scary. Um, but yeah, it's the, it's the horror scenes in this book um, that really give it its impact. Um, like the rats, the, the plot is a bit 
boring to be honest with you so the concept and the set pieces are fantastic but the actual plot is is kind of dull so the fog comes out of the ground and floats across the country um, and anyone that is infected by it you know commits murder or, or commits suicide um, but basically that you know the main plot is about this everyman hero so like the rat which had a, a school teacher as its hero um the fog has a you know an everyday sort of a guy as its hero in this case he's a public health inspector and he gets involved with the kind of government scientists and things like that who are investigating what's going on but really it's just about them tracking the progress of the fog um, as it slowly floats across the country um so it's it's kind of um not that gripping um and you know and just the fact that it is moving slowly is is almost comical in a way that you know it's really slowly moving towards a big city and you know that when it gets to the city terrible things are going to happen but just the fact that it moves inch by inch slowly across the countryside um is kind of a bit weird um so yeah, but interesting that you get this every man, every man hero um, kind of character again. So someone who, um, you know, doesn't choose to be a hero, but just gets wrapped up in what's going on and ends up with no choice but to but to do heroic stuff. Um, so quite an appealing character um, to have as a hero, um, even if the plot that he's involved in um, is not all that of an interesting one. So yeah, definitely a another belter um, from James Herbert. So it came out in 1975, so the year after The Rats was published. Um, and as I say, went a long way to cementing his popularity. Um, I certainly remember, you know, not just the cover, um, but people talking about this book at school. Uh, people whose older brothers had read it and, and, you know, relayed the horrific things that happened in the book. There was a real buzz around it, um, certainly in the UK, uh, uh, in the, the late 70s and early 80s. Um, and yeah, Herbert wrote, went on to write many, many books, but I think it's his first two, The Rats and the Fog that are the most important ones because they really established him as a big voice in, in horror, particularly British horror. Um, and they both have a very British feel about them as well. Um, so yeah, another fantastic book from, from Herbert and definitely one that I recommend. Okay, time for a random book from the shelves. A much more modern horror novel um, for that. So I've got here The Watchers by A.M. Shine, who's an Irish author. Um, so not, not British, but um, from this side of the Atlantic. Uh, so this book came out last year. I received it, I think, in an Abominable Book Club uh, subscription box, but haven't read it yet. But at least two people um, who've read it, one who I'm in a book club with and one who I'm friends with on, on Instagram, um, have recommended it highly. They both said it's really, really fantastic. Um, so it is one I'm definitely going to get to soon. Uh, it's fairly short as well. So it's 300 pages uh, and the print's reasonably large. So it feels like a good contender for the uh, for the 100 book challenge too. So yeah, looking forward to, to reading this one at some point. So I hope you found that interesting. Do let me know if you read The Fog um, and what you think of it, um, particularly if you read it too young like I did. Um, it is a really horrific book and, and I think probably scarred me in some ways as well as establishing my, my love of horror. Um, so yeah, as always, hope you're safe and well out there. I hope you're reading good stuff and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.